Hello, my name is Mel Brown and this is my Exploring Microwave Yarn Dyeing episode. Um, I'm going to uh, be doing a workshop on microwave dyeing how to retreat in a, about two and a half weeks. Um, and so I'm going to do some exploring of microwave dyeing techniques to show people what they can achieve. And I thought I'd uh, get you to watch in with me. So, um, first the important thing to say is I'm absolutely no expert on dyeing of any kind. Um, and certainly not microwave dyeing. Um, but I have bought quite a few of these. So, superwash, uh, yarn, um, and nylon. So, it's standard sock yarn, but it's superwash, so it's going to be um, easier to handle. And I have some very basic ingredients, some uh, food colouring. Uh, you can use any sort. Um, I'm using citric acid, which you can buy. I will put a link in the show notes. The show notes for this will be, um, there's a link down below, it'll take you across the rabbit hole and you'll be able to click on links there. I'll show you the things I've bought and where I got them from, um, but mostly you can buy things from anywhere. Um, and I'm going to explore a few techniques. Um, now, they're not the best techniques, they're not the ideal way to do it, uh, they're just a way of doing it. And if you've often thought it would be nice to try out yarn dyeing but never actually done it, this might be the opportunity to give it a go. Um, I'll show you the results at the end, but now I'll just hand you over to um, past me, who's already done all the work. Have fun. Right, to get started. I have got five skeins of sock weight yarn that I have soaked in a bucket of water. So it's not just a standard water, it's uh, the six litres of water and three teaspoons of citric acid. So you need some acid to make the dye take. Um, you can use vinegar, white vinegar. I hate the smell of vinegar, so I use citric acid. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes to an easy way to purchase it. It's just a, a white powder, looks a bit like sugar. Okay, um, I have purchased these um, reusable cable ties. Um, my uh, One of my gurus, uh, Rebecca from Chemnitz, uses them. You can tighten them and you can loosen them because it's just much, much easier to pull them out of the water um, with one of these. Um, again, I'll put a link to the product um, where I bought it from. It's only from Amazon. Um, so I've got five skeins soaking in here. Um, and the other advantage of these is I'm going to be doing some double knits and some four ply, so I'm going to better put a bit of nail varnish on the double knit ones so that we know which ones they are. So they're all soaking in warm, um, acidic water, um, just for at least half an hour while I get everything else ready. Okay, the next thing I have prepared is five colours of Wilton's. So this is a food colouring. You can get them in the UK on Amazon. Uh, you can get them in the US. I'm sure you can get many other food colourings that are just as good, uh, but this just happens to be the one that, um, that I've got. So I've made up um, lemon yellow, Kelly green, my favourite, violet, um, Christmas red, and, where are we, sorry, Christmas red and royal blue. So what I've done is I've put about half a teaspoon of those into one of these sauce bottles. These are 330 millilitres, um, so that's about half full. The the first one I didn't do very well, it's still not very um, very mixed in. You can see the lumps in the bottom there. Um, and the, the these aren't actually, you can't just put your hand over and shake it, they're not very good. So what I had to do was, um, get a cup measure, a metal cup measure, put the half teaspoon in that, put some boiling water in, get that all dissolved and then pop them in and dilute them a little bit. So I've got five of these all set up and ready to go. And what I'm going to do, I've got a plan. I want to start off with a sort of solid, stroke semi-solid, just basically in a jug with water. Um, the second thing I want to do is I want to do put it in a jug with some Easter egg dyes. And the third thing is I want to hand paint. So lots of plans. Um, the first thing is I'm going to go get a glass jug. So a glass jug is better than a plastic one because it really can't take any colour. But here we go, we've got a one litre um, jug here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish out one of these skeins and I'm just going to literally dump it in the jug. So there won't be much, won't be an awful lot of water in it. 
um, there's not much you can see underneath I'm not sure if you can see that underneath there's a little bit of water in here but there's not actually any on the surface so that would be what, what I would call low immersion so one of the dyes uh, one of the favourite things, my favourite things about the violet is that because it's violet it's purple, it's made out of red and blue, they often separate. So what I'm going to do is if I can locate the purple one, I do believe it's this one, and I'm just going to put a little bit in the top. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it in. Just put it around there on the outside and over the top like that. Okay, there's not a huge amount in there you can see where it's spread to and if I bring the camera down you can see the top as well okay I have no idea what effect that will have I'm just going to lift it up give it a scooch around I think I probably want a little bit more but I'm actually already starting to see the colors splitting so I'm going to put a little bit more in a concentrated lump in the middle. These bottles are not doing me any favours. So there's a bit more in the bottom now. Um, and it's, yeah, okay, so it's going to be a kind of semi-solid. Okay, I'm just really not knowing what to do. Can you see the blue here? So there's some of the blue has come out. So there must be some that's got some red in it somewhere. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of the water, of the acidic water in, um, using a glass. Let the cat out. I want to take part for some reason. I'm going to put a bit more of this acidic water from the bucket in. It's not quite as low immersion now. But there's no colour in the water. And it's all gone straight into the yarn, which is really interesting. That wasn't what I was expecting. I'm going to push it down a little bit. So it's now a little bit more immersed. And I'm going to put some more... Oh, that's some purple. Oh, blue. Let's put some blue in. Just... Why not? Okay. Give it a lift up. Give it a scooch around. Okay, I'm now going to put that in the microwave for two minutes. Right, I give it two minutes in the microwave and then two minutes to stand. Interestingly, insight into my chaotic life, in those four minutes I've been able to get some washing out of the washing machine and hang most of it out. Okay, so here it is. And I'm just going to have a quick test of the water to see how much dye is left in it. And there is very little. But there is some. So what I'm going to do... And have you noticed yet that I'm making this up as I go along? I don't really have much of a plan. I can definitely see some purples in there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put... I really don't think I want these white patches. So I'm going to put in some more purple to the water. That should actually make the, the water purple so that the rest, when I sink it in, it should all pick up some colour. Now gloves at this point would be a good idea wouldn't they? Yes. Also so with something to protect the table so just colour the table. So I'll go sort that out. Okay two minutes plus two minutes resting is up again and here it is. So it's definitely got quite a lot of colour in it and you can see from the water it's almost clear. And there's still some kind of white patches. No, they're probably not white, actually. They're probably lilac. Okay, what I'm going to do, because there is still a little bit of uh, dye left in the water. Actually, no, I don't think there is any dye left in the water. I think that one's probably done. Um, it's not the kind of yarn that I would buy, but it's very interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to set that onto a plate. I've got just an audio in a plate, and I'm going to set it onto a plate and leave it to cool. And then I'm going to get on to the next one. So the more water I can get out of it, the better. So I'm going to let it drip for a few seconds. I'm not going to squeeze it because it'll burn my hands. 
I'm going to put it onto a plate and leave it to cool so I can crack on with the next thing. So I've got some plain water in here. I say plain, it's got the, um, it's, um, it's the acid in it, of course. I'm going to get my next skein and I'm going to pop that in. What am I doing with this one? What do you think? What should I do? I want to hand paint a couple. Well, I couldn't find any Easter egg dies. I think I must have used all those up. I want to hand paint a couple. So this is just going to be um, another experiment. Right, that's got quite, that's pr almost completely covered. That's good. Okay, I think I will try and do, kind of go back to the start and do something that's a bit more solid. So I'm going to take, lift the skein out for a bit and just put the green in. This is Kelly green. And see if I can just get a kind of a solid, pretty much a solid colour. So I'm going to do a good old squirt of that. And then I'm going to use the skein to stir it around. Actually, I'm kind of doing a bit of a dip thing here. I hadn't planned to do that, but I've dipped some of it in. It's, the water's already warm and there's already an acid sauce in there, so it's already able to take. And I'm just slowly letting it go in. Now, this may be, have a very marginal effect, um, or it may have... What's the opposite of marginal? A massive effect. No idea. So it's a kind of slow dip dye. If the heat was on, it would have more of an effect, but it is actually already st still quite warm, so... I'm just slowly dipping it in. I will show you the effect straight away in a minute. So, yeah, this is looking good. And it's good to be using green because, as my friends will tell you, when I dye, it's almost always red and blue or purple, which of course is red and blue. Okay. I think that might have actually worked quite well. I'm going to lift it up so you can see it. Tell me what you think. I think at the bottom is definitely quite dark. Okay, but there's still plenty in there that have died. I don't think you can really see that. I'm going to just submerge it now. And I'll show it to you briefly and then I'm going to put it in the microwave. So it's got a lovely kind of lemon, no not lemon, um, kind of minty green on top. And there's some dark patches. Okay, so... Two minutes in, two minutes rest. Here we go. Right, while that's standing, I, the microwave is saying, it's standing. Um, I'm going to get started on the next thing. It's going to be a bit messy. It's going to be hand painting. So I'm going to turn this around and show you what I'm doing. I'll keep the voice. So I've got a big piece of plastic here to protect in my table. And I'm going to put some cling film out. Um, what do you call this in the US? Plastic wrap. We usually call it cling film. This is a great big box I've got, had for years. So I'm going to put one piece. I always make a mess of cling film, do you? Um, I'm going to put one piece here because I'm going to make a kind of donut with it. I have watched so many videos and of uh, dyeing, and dyeing um, hand painting like this is a common theme for me. Okay. Can you see I've got two lines there? And I'm going to kind of connect them, but I want to keep this gap in the middle. Right, that's the microwave, and that means my alarm's going to go off in a minute. Tell me two minutes is up. I'm going to put one that way. And another one that way. Okay. Meanwhile, here it is. So here's the green. Lift it out for you. There's definitely some kind of a gradient. It's a little bit patchy. But there's definitely a gradient in there. And I actually quite like the white stuff at the top. I think that might be fine as it is. That was a pretty quick dye job. And the water is pretty clear. Can you see? I think I'm going to put that one aside as a very fast and dirty um, example and let that cool. In the meantime, I have got my table all set up and I'm just going to bring across the yarn.
cable ties are amazing. <laughs> They've made such a difference to be able to hoik a, one skein out. Okay, so I'm laying it down on the donut like that. And the idea later on is that I will pick these up and wrap them in. This is the idea. How it works in practice will remain to be seen. So, I have over here my bottles of dye, and I have very sensibly found a glove. So I'm going to pop that on. Um, probably won't fit because my fingers are so immensely long, but that's okay. So. I'm going to attempt to contain the colour onto the cling film and I've made the yarn, I've wringed it, wrung it out so it's not hugely wet, um, it's not dry by any means but I don't want it to be dry. So I'm going to try and contain it. Tell you what I'll do, I'll get some kitchen paper just in case there's a mistake. Okay, now I might do a little bit of blending of colours as well. So I'm going to get a ramekin. Well, that was somebody called Harry wanting to sell me life insurance. Okay, so I got myself a ramekin and I think I might just put a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow in here. See if we can make a nice sunny orange. Um, yeah, another of Rebecca from Chemnitz Tips. Get a piece of kitchen paper, dip it in, you've got to see what the colour is going to look like. That's quite a nice little orange, isn't it? Uh, I'll pop that on there. Okay, so I'm going to spread this out on this section here. The dye is not going as far as I thought it would do. Hmm. There's a bit of red there that I dripped. Let's bring that in as well. Yeah, that's not going very far, is it? So I probably need to mix a bit more and make a terrible mess. Would, be good, would that be a good idea? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Right, let's just tip that all over this section here and squish it in. Try not to do it with my left hand because that's not got a glove on. So we're going underneath as well. That's not bad. I'm not too worried about that. Let's do a little bit of red over here. Now this is the one that's not completely dissolved. Um, so there's some kind of blotches which I can smush in. Again that. Okay. Okay. Um, there's some yellow here. I wonder if I can just soak that up. Yeah. Let's put some yellow over here. So we are using quite a lot of the dye solution, which is really useful to find out because I'm going to need quite a bit more than I thought. Okay, so we've got orange, red and yellow. What have we not used yet from my pots? I think we've used everything. Let's do a bit of purple over here. As you can see, there's absolutely no plan here. Um, what do I do? Purple, that's a bit more. Let's bring it all around to this orange. And then there's just this section over here, and I think we need to make that green. Yep. And there's going to be some gaps in between. And then now I thought I might do, I was going to do some sprinkles, but I think I'll do that. Sprinkles, I keep saying that. Um, what's the actual word? Uh, speckles. But I think I might leave that to another skein because this is already a bit busy. Okay, I have no idea whether this is going to work. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off my glove and I'm going to put some more cling film over the top.
point with the box. Like that. And it sticks to the things that you don't particularly want it to stick to. Do you find that? There's this really sharp bit here, which I often cut myself on when it's in the cupboard, and yet it doesn't seem to be sharp enough to cut the cling film. Okay, so I've basically got another four mirroring the, the four that were underneath, um, and I'm going to try and scrunch it up into a donut. Okay, so pulling these bits together and wrapping them around. And these bits. The idea is to try not to let the colour leak from one area to another. Okay, so that's my great big sausage. I'm going to get a plate and put my sausage onto the plate. And now repair. Um, let's see, can you see that? Okay. Repair what's On a scale of 1 to 10, this isn't going hugely well, to be honest. Okay. I'm going to try that in the microwave for two minutes. Right. For my next game, my fourth one, I want to do some speckles. But I think I want to have a kind of light base colour underneath. Um, so the speckles will take. Now, the ones I've got little half-open packs of, now this is Kool-Aid smells amazing. If you're new, UK, you may never have heard of it before. It's considered a, um, a food stuff in the US, although really it's just citric acid and colourings. Um, but because it's got acid and colour, it's perfect for us because it's already an acid source. Now the three packs that I've got open from a previous um, endeavour are dark purple, scarlet and light turquoise, effectively. They're flavours, but that's the colour they come out. Now one of them might be a bit damp, but what I'm going to do is if I do a very light blue, just uh, a solid light blue, and then sprinkle these on top. Let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to get my jug, which is still here, with warm acidic water in it to get some blue. Put quite a bit of blue in there, but then just some of the soaking water as well. Well, actually, I'll put the skein in and top it up with soaking water so that it should um, be, there should be plenty okay, in it. Okay, so the so. Black background blue is in the microwave and I've just got this out. So here it is. Um, there's no water for me to test to see if the colour's all gone in. It's steaming nicely. Um, there, because there wasn't an awful lot of, <coughs> excuse me, of colour um, water left, it hasn't transferred. So we've still got very um, clear colour definition. What I'm going to do next is just to make sure I'm going to put it in for another two minutes. But because the other one's in at the moment, that'll give my two minutes resting time. So this is, yeah, as soon as that one's out, this one's going to go back in again. And then I'm going to get the blue one down here and have a look, see how the sprinkles go. I think I might do it directly onto a plate. That might save mess, might it? Right, uh, the blue, the water was clear. So I poured it away. Um, and here it is. So it's got a background kind of semi-solid. I'm going to have to try and wring this out now to put it on my plate, I think. I don't want it too wet, but it is quite hot. So do take care, people. I could say don't try this at home, but you're all adults. You're quite capable of working it out for yourselves. So I'm going to put it in a concentric ring on my plate. And then I'm going to show you where it's at. There we go. Here it is. Yum, yum. So, in no particular order, let's try the light turquoise. So this is actually um, raspberry lemonade flavour, but my friend who gave these to me has very kindly written on the back what colour they generally come out at. That's what it looks like inside. So I'm going to put some sprinkles on of this half. Now they're light turquoise so they might provide a little bit of um, a deeper colour but they're not going to be a different colour so let's try the dark purple. 
This flavour is... Hmm. Don't know if I've already torn that off. Sorry about that. Um, the smell is amazing. It's very fruity and artificial, but quite nice. Now that's the blue. Uh, no, sorry, the um, multicoloured one again. Let's do some over here. Oh gosh, that's a bit stronger colour, isn't it? Can you see that? Let's just do it over here. Oh, there's a lump. <laughs> that's a great big lump in there. Break that up a little bit. Which I touch the lump, it breaks up, which is fine. So some sprinkles here of that. And then I'll just do the scarlet ones in the other area. This is raz uh, strawberry flavour, just in this area over here. Now, of course, this is only on one side of the yarn. There's some big clumps there. It's only actually on one side of the yarn. So underneath hasn't got any yarn. So they're going to be quite random. Now, the only thing I'm thinking at this point is, apart from these great big clumps, is there enough water? That's my question. So, I think what I'll do... What should I do? Should I sprinkle a little bit of water on from the, um, from the bucket, which is now a little bit blue? That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to play with it anymore. I'm just going to put it in as it is and hope it works. This is the multicolored skein. Um, so it's had four minutes in there now. I'm going to get it out from the cling film and have a look. Hmm. There's a lot of patches of white, which is not necessarily what you might be after. So I think probably with this method might um, go for pre-soaking, pre-washing in a pre-dyeing. Okay, I'm going to let that cool. So this is my sprinkles yarn um, out of the microwave after two minutes. It's looking all right. Um, not much coming over on the blue sprinkles. Uh, why do I keep using that word? I'm just going to adopt it. That's the word I'm going to use. But the red and the purple ones have come out quite nicely. But I think I'm going to give it another two, just letting it stand for two minutes. I'm going to give it another two, and then I'm going to let them all cool. And then I'm going to give them a wash individually with a little bit of washing up liquid, just a tiny bit. Just to, um, if there's anything, any dye left that's not set to get that out. So um, let the yarn cool and then wash it. And then it can uh, anything that's not stuck in it will come out and then we can dry it and see what it looks like. I'll see you on the other side. Hello. Right, we're back up here and it's all finished, almost dry. Um, I washed all four skeins, a little bit of washing up liquid and hardly any dye came out. Um, even, actually none came out, even from the sprinkles one. Um, so everything, uh, all the colour we put in is in the yarn. It's important to do this because it shows that when we do come to use it in a project, uh, we're not going to, it's not going to lose any colour at that point. So I'm going to show you them one by one. This is the first skein. So it's the blue and the purple, kind of splotchy, making it up as you go along kind of effect. I'm going to put it in the skein for you and you can have a look at how it looks there. Um, it's not quite dry, but not far off. So there it is. And I'm not very good at skeining, but there it is. <laughs> there it is. So I love the colours, the uh, design itself. Who knows how that will come out in the in the knitting or the crochet or the weaving or whatever. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, that's yarn number one. Yarn number two was a really fast uh, dip dyeing job in green, and here it is. So there's definitely a gradient there, although it's rather patchy, rather more patchy than I expected, actually. So you've got some darker greens, some almost undyed, almost, um, and then everything in between. So that's, I would count that as a semi-solid, and I think that would look rather nice um, in a two-colour shawl with something else. 
that looks wrapped. I'm not going to do the full wrap because I'm rubbish at it. So that's two. Number three, you know I said at the beginning there were five skeins? Mm -hmm. Four. And now the bolt coloured one. Here it is. So lots and lots of patches of white. So had I pre-dyed this with a light colour, then there wouldn't be white, there'd be that. I could over dye it now, but I don't really want to lose the quality of these colours. I mean, that yellow is just so vibrant, isn't it? If I over dyed it with something, I would lose the strength of these colours. So, really happy finally with that. speckled, sprinkled, um, whatever I was calling it, yarn. So, you can't, re I can't, re oh, I suppose I can just about tell the difference between the purple speckles and the red speckles no sign of the blue ones but then that was fairly obvious really wasn't it because oh hang on because it's blue yarn but look can you just about see here there so it would be way too subtle um for anybody to see but they're there so there it is um the sprinkles the yeah, I don't know how that will come out in the finished yarn, obviously you never do. I don't tend to buy yarn with um, with speckles in it. I don't really like speckles, but a lot of people like to use them. So, there you go. I'm quite happy with that. Um, if you are interested in having a go, then do please uh, have a go. Uh, if you put it on Instagram, use the hashtag dye one skein because that's uh, something I'm quite interested in seeing. Um, do tag me on Instagram if you have a go and if you want to ask any questions or have a go, um, comment below or over on Ravelry. Um, thanks for watching. Have a go. Bye.